Welcome to The Zone. In today's episode, we will be looking at one of the most deadly environmental events that commonly occur within The Zone, emissions. If you enjoy the content, feel free to like and subscribe. If you'd like to support the channel, feel free to check out our new merch store and our Patreon. Without further ado, let's dive in. These cataclysmic events occur randomly throughout the zone, emanating from the Chernobyl nuclear power plant. When an emission is detected, alerts will be sent out to all stalkers in the zone, giving those outside of shelter a short amount of time to find a suitable location to hold up during the storm. These alerts will take the form of short messages on your PDA, or a radio transmission. When an emission is triggered, a massive amount of energy is released into the zone causing hurricane force winds and otherworldly new sphere energy to cover the surrounding area. The sky will turn a bright orange and red, almost like a small and angry sun. This light will emanate from the Chernobyl nuclear power plant, and as the storm comes closer to your position, you will see arcs of lightning and swirling clouds. If you manage to make it into a shelter, you will feel the earth shake and the wind howl as the alien energies pass over you outside. Anyone caught outside during an emission, or anyone who is not in sufficient cover, will be killed almost instantly. As you emerge from your shelter, you will see that the landscape of the zone has changed slightly. Anomalies that you had just documented or mapped may have changed their position slightly. New artifacts may suddenly appear next to anomalies that you had recently just scanned. The zone itself may have gotten larger, and the bodies of your companions may litter the ground as they were only meters away from the safety of a bunker. Such is life in the zone. After the clandestine research organization, known as the Group, began to experiment with new sphere manipulation, many individuals and organizations began to study the eldritch energies that emitted around the Chernobyl nuclear power plant. The military began to investigate the events surrounding the earthquake and glowing lights that were observed on April 12, 2006. Scientists and Ukrainian military forces were dispatched to secure the Chernobyl nuclear power plant and study the surrounding area. The task force was ordered to set up a cordon around the exclusion zone and to maintain a scientific presence in the area, looking for clues regarding the unstable phenomena and to attempt to find a cause for the newly discovered tectonic activity and the light emitted over the old power plant. It was during this investigation that the outside world first became aware of the imminent danger that the zone posed to the world. The first emission recorded took place months later, on June 10th, 2006, which was known as the second disaster. The survivors of this event would later find out that this storm had caused the zone to expand, increasing the area affected by five kilometers. Another emission was recorded shortly after the events of the second disaster, during a military operation into the very heart of the zone. Hundreds of military operatives and scientists made their way via helicopter just outside of the Chernobyl nuclear power plant. This team was tasked with detonating a nuclear device in an attempt to destroy the zone. As if the zone itself knew the plans of this task force, a massive storm erupted just as they reached their intended target. This emission resulted in the death of almost the entire task force and left the soldiers who managed to survive it stranded without any hope of rescue. After those in the zone had experienced their first emission, scientists studying the area began to hypothesize that the nature and cause of the deadly storm resulted in the zone's expansion. Those who had some knowledge of the experimentation that occurred prior to the zone's emergence, like the members of Clear Sky and the group, asserted that the emission was tied to a breach in the new sphere. It was believed that this breach would cause energy from the new sphere to slowly build up pressure, almost like a bottle of champagne being shaken. When the pressure proved too great, the cork would pop, and the buildup of new sphere energy would leak into the material world. The resulting leak causes massive amounts of psi energy to saturate the zone, causing massive damage to all those who are left in the open. The effects of this energy will cause massive damage to a person's nervous system and body, eventually leading to death from prolonged exposure. Some scientists working with Clear Sky speculated that this massive storm of energy could function as a sort of immune system, clearing out objects and creatures that should not exist within the zone's sphere of influence. 
While the members of Clear Sky had some idea about what caused the world-altering emission, they were unable to predict the frequency, severity, and their trigger. It was later revealed, although too late, that the zone itself was alive. As the operatives of Clear Sky began to close in on the stalker Strelik and the Chernobyl nuclear power plant, the climactic battle took place. During the barrage of gunfire, it was revealed that the sea consciousness actually controlled the flow of the new sphere energy into our dimension. When this entity realized that its position had been compromised and that the winners of this gunfight might attempt to destroy it, a massive storm of energy was released, resulting in the death or capture of the majority of Clear Sky and Strelik himself. This tragic event proved that the emissions do in fact act as an immune system, but the upper echelon of Clear Sky was unaware that the Sea Consciousness Project had been a success and was able to actually control the breach between our world and the new sphere. This can be seen again during the events of Shadow of Chernobyl, as the zone itself seems to react to Strelik, attempting to push further and further into the zone. While the resulting emissions were triggered at scheduled intervals, being deliberate attempts to stop Strelik from pursuing his goals, currently, the zone is much more unstable and chaotic. After Strelik destroyed the Sea Consciousness, the zone began to experience emissions on a much more regular basis. Emissions began to occur almost daily, leaving some to hypothesize that these storms were an ominous omen, signaling the zone's imminent expansion. While it's possible that the zone could expand at any moment, similar to how the zone expanded during the first emission, it has not been observed as of yet. While each stalker in the zone has their own perspective on what emissions actually are, the only personnel who could possibly have any insight into the true nature of emissions would be the scientists who had at least some knowledge of the group and the Sea Consciousness Project. Those who do not have such knowledge can only provide working theories, such as the members of Clear Sky, who researched the properties of the zone and the new sphere itself. What is known about emissions is that without the Sea Consciousness, they have drastically increased in frequency. While the Sea Consciousness was known to utilize emissions as a way of keeping undesirable personnel from reaching it, it is still unclear what role the Sea Consciousness played in holding back the zone. We cannot be completely sure of the circumstances surrounding the second disaster. It is unclear if a team trekked too close to the Chernobyl nuclear power plant and threatened the Sea Consciousness, or if the Sea Consciousness was simply unable to hold back a large swell of new sphere energy. What is clear, however, is that the second disaster must have contained extreme amounts of this otherworldly energy as it caused the zone to expand five kilometers and bent the very fabric of our reality into the zone. From this information, we can hypothesize that the amount of energy released from an emission is proportional to its effect on the material world. If we consider that the new sphere is like a corked bottle, it would make sense that the longer between an emission, more energy will build up causing a more deadly and powerful emission. This is not the case, unfortunately, as the emission on June 10th, 2006 was only a few months after the first experiments that caused the creation of the Sea Consciousness and the presumed tear in the new sphere. Furthermore, from the reports of strange phenomena and creatures near the Chernobyl nuclear power plant in the early 2000s and the investigation that was conducted by the Ukrainian government in the 90s, it seems that the new sphere has been leaking into our world for years before the second disaster. If there was an amount of new sphere energy in the zone before the experiments carried out on April 12th, how did it get there? It is possible that smaller tears existed prior to the creation of the sea consciousness, and that these tears were stable enough not to cause any major disturbances. It could also be the case that before serious changes to the environment can be visibly detected, there must be a large enough tear in the fabric of our reality. It could also be the case that the second disaster and all the emissions prior to the Sea Consciousness's destruction were released by design, and that there is in fact no need to let this excess energy into our reality. While we know that the Sea Consciousness will utilize these emissions as a way of stopping humans from reaching the zone, what if the only reasons emissions exist in the first place is that they are a last-ditch effort by the Sea Consciousness to stop intruders? What if the Sea Consciousness was able to hold back the new sphere indefinitely, if it desired? This would be a far more sinister reality, as it would mean that the cork in the bottle was itself the Sea Consciousness, 
and the destruction of the sea consciousness has caused these emissions to simply come and go as they will. With the removal of the cork, the new sphere energy could flood into our world, meaning that it is only a matter of time before the zone expands again. While this last hypothesis is speculation on my part, I fully believe that we will see the zone expand in time, and that the result of destroying the sea consciousness will be felt for generations to come, and we might see this in Stalker 2. Thanks for watching guys. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to like and subscribe for more stock related content. Until next time, I'll see you in the zone.